One of the most impactful events that I can remember in terms of my young intellectual life was coming across the work of Martin Heidegger. Uh, remember, it was a time and I was in college and I was in taking philosophy courses and um, I came across an article or actually a, it was a, um, an essay in, in the book from uh, Kaufman and it talked about Martin Heidegger's work and um, something that piqued my interest in understanding what philosophy was, right, was, you know, from the Platonic and the um, ancient philosophical and even modern philosophical positions of what is truth, what is justice, what is good, what is beauty, right? And Martin Heidegger was the first person I come across, first thinker that asked, we are not getting um, to the root of philosophy. Philosophy is being, the question is, what is being? So we say, what is good? You're presupposing that you know what being is. So that was just uh, a kind of profound moment for me. And uh, Martin Heidegger's early kind of magnum opus is being in time, um, where he delves into this question of the relationship between uh, individual beings and being as such, right? And he talks about this um, ontological, ontic ontological divide, which is this chasm between the being of beings and being in itself, right? And he juxtaposes the idea of the way that we think conventionally about what um, beings are and what objects are, right? Uh, and especially a human being. Like a human being is not an object among other objects. It's not an object contained in space and time like you would think of a chair or a house or a car. Um, it is, a, a hum the human being is, is comprised of space and time and define space and time and in doing so um, develops a world right makes worlds creates worlds um, and, and I'm not going to get into you know uh, the early Heidegger this probably video will probably be for people that are more familiar with Heidegger because I wanted to get into his later work uh, contributions to philosophy of the event which is one of his most and one of the most enigmatic um, pieces of philosophy that I've come across. And I'm going to go and just do a little bit of close, close reading of the first uh, couple paragraphs to give you a flavor if you're not familiar with this work um, written here um, by Martin Heidegger. And this was uh, later in his career when after he had his turn, his Kira, uh, where he returned from a more you know conventional philosophical standpoint to a more kind of poetic um, exploration of philosophy as such. And his critique here is, and it's, it's kind of commented in early in the chapter of the, the title of his book, Contributions to Philosophy, which sounds like something that you would present us at a philosophical symposium, very kind of bland and, uh, and generic. And that is actually his critique of, of philosophy since the Socratics and the pre-Socratics, that he wants to get back to what was the originary uh, question that, it, that inaugurated philosophy itself. He says that we've since in the last you know, few thousand years have exhausted the potency of philosophy and of language itself, where they've, it's become kind of an empty shell of what it was. And he's attempting to get back to, uh, an, he's, he's attempting to create a new beginning, you know, to hearken back to what the pre-Socratic philosophers were, were intuiting and intimating when they started asking questions and philosophical questions. Since then, it's been this systemati systematization uh, that has um, kind of left philosophy um, hollow, in a sense. And all these new philosophers and new philosophies are just kind of spinning their wheels. It's, we're not getting to the root, the primordial question of being in itself, which is what Heidegger is looking to get at here in his... Uh, in his book, um, and it's really it's 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 written in a um, kind of poetic language, so it's hard to kind of grasp exactly what he's trying to get at, and that's done, I think, on purpose to try to stimulate and try to compel a new way of thinking, uh, and uh, he calls it inceptual thinking, inventive thinking, to think the new event of philosophy, right? So he's looking to create a new beginning, a new way of questioning, looking, thinking, linguistically articulating the world. So it's just a quick kind of um, preview of what the question is that's that's being asked here by Heidegger. And again, it's a, a very 
interesting, fun to read book, a lot of beautiful, beautiful sections and passages. And I'm going to read just a couple of paragraphs to, to see if there's an interest here for me to kind of go on further. Um, but this will be geared towards more of kind of the philosophy nerds um, of my subscriber base. So getting into the first, um, the first chapter, uh, it's, it's entitled The Prospect, and the different chapters have these uh, kind of en en enigmatic functional titles. So chapter one is entitled Prospect, chapter two is The Resonating, chapter three is The Interplay, chapter four is The Leap, chapter five is The Grounding, chapter six is the future ones chapter seven the last god chapter eight being so he he um he juxtaposes the idea of being capital b-e-i-n-g as the considerations of philosophy up until the the event the aragonist as he calls it that where we're looking to explore here uh, he spells this new conceptual conceptual understanding of being as b-e-y-n-g Right? And there's already in his older work the difference between beings, small b, b-e-i-n-g, so humans, creatures, right? And being, b-e-i-n-g, which a lot of people, uh, I think, uh, rightfully and maybe not so rightfully consider it, you know, a kind of theistic, theological consideration of being, you know, is the thing that makes beings possible in a sense. But he's looking to get at an originary, a more originary and new understanding of being. So he spells it b-e-y-n-g. So I uh, will get started here. The official title, Contributions to Philosophy and the Essential Rubric of the Event. The official title must by necessity now sound dull, ordinary and empty, and will make it seem that at issue here are quote unquote scholarly contributions to the quote unquote advancement of philosophy. Philosophy can be officially announced no other way since all essential titles have become impossible on account of the exhaustion of every basic word and the destruction of the genuine relation to words. So right at right out the gate here, he's coming in in, in a hard critique of philosophy and through the you know the kind of the banal title of of the book itself, and he's saying that words in themselves have lost their potency, their their the their internal inherent logos has been kind of depleted completely. And um, he's looking to again get at a uh, at the core of what philosophy um, is and can be. So he continues here. The official title, however, is also in accord with the quote, matter at issue. To the extent that in the age of transition from metaphysics to the thinking of being, B-E-Y-N-G, in its historicality, no more can be ventured than an attempt at a thinking, which would arise out of a more originary basic position within the question of the truth of being. Yet even the successful attempt must, in conformity with the basic event of that which is to be thought inventively, right, this new way of, of considering being, keep its distance from every false claim to be a quote-unquote work in the previous style. Future thinking is a course of thought on which the hitherto altogether concealed realm of the essential occurrence of being is traversed and so is first cleared and attained in its most proper character as an event. So the event of being, right, is, is not going to be, there has to be an, uh, some, a bridge between old philosophical ways of thinking and knowing to this new event, erogenous, this clearing is being made for this new inceptual inventive thinking to occur within beings, which is a, a turn of, you know, he, he claims in his earlier work that, that beings have, have forgotten being, right? So there's this huge gap between beings, you know, small b, and then being itself, right? And he's saying that the event is the return of being, right? In a, in a pro appropriate articulation of beings in context of being, B-E-Y-N-G, uh, which is going to be inaugurated by this event that he's talking about. He calls it aragnus, is, is, is the German term for it. And for the event to occur, there's a clearing, uh, a space of possibilities that uh, emerges that wasn't um, available before. So uh, continuing here. 
The issue is no longer to be, quote unquote, about something, to present something objective, but to be appropriated over, to be appropriated over to the appropriating event. So the issue is no longer to be about something, about the good, the true, the beautiful, about beings, about tr justice, uh, insert any philosophical notion here, um, to, pre to present something objective. We're not looking to re-articulate the objective-subjective divide here. Right, the, this, this the subjective objective divide is what the problem is, right? So he's looking to bridge that gap, but to be appropriated over to the appropriating event. This is equivalent to an essential transformation of the human being from rational animal to Dasein. Now, Dasein is his um, originary conception of the human being, and he wanted to get away from ideas. You know, scientific ideas or ideas of consciousness or ideas of subjectivity, psychologicalization of the human being. These are the things that he's trying to um, get around here. So he says, this is equivalent to an essential transformation of the human being from rational animal to Dasein. Literally means the there. The fitting rubric is therefore of the event. This is not to be understood in the sense of a report on it about it. Instead, it means that a, belong, a belonging to being, B-E-Y-N-G, and to the word of being, a belonging in thinking and saying is something appropriated by the event. So the event itself, this inauguration of being as such, appropriates beings, and there's a reciprocal relationship between beings and being to uh, inaugurate this new uh, thinking, this new inceptual way of considering uh, being itself. So, um, subsection one, I'm just going to read a little bit longer here. Um, the contr these contributions question along the way. These quote-unquote contributions question along a way which is first paved by, transi by the transition to the other beginning, the one Western thought is now entering. This way brings the transition into the open realm of history and founds the transition as a possibly very long sojourn. And carrying out the transition, the other beginning of thought always remains something only surmised, though indeed something already decided. Accordingly, these quote-unquote contributions, although already and exclusively a speaking of the essence of being, i.e. of the appropriating event, are not yet able to join the free conjecture of the truth of being out of being itself. If this articulation once succeeds, then that essence of being in its trembling will determine the structure of the work of thought. This trembling will then strengthen into the power of the realized mildness of an intimacy proper to the divinization of the God of gods from which occurs the assignment of Dasein to being as the grounding of the truth of being. So this event is going to ground the truth of being, of human beings, of Dasein, um, through the appropriating of the appropriating event into a new conceptual way of thinking and being, which this shouldn't make sense. If this makes sense completely, then, you know, the, the whole project is, is, uh, is kind of for naught, right? This, is, should not, this should not make sense for a bit until it does make some sense in a new way. It's kind of like this Deleuzian idea of, of tracing a line of flight, right, into a new plane of consistency and developing, um, through difference in repetition, developing new ways of, of exploring a territory, in this sense, a linguistic and, and ontological and metaphysical territory. Nevertheless, here already the thoughtful speaking of a philosophy within the other beginning must be attempted in the manner of a preliminary exercise. The issue is then neither to describe nor to explain, neither to promulgate nor to teach. Here the speaking is not something over and against what it is to be said, but is this latter itself as the essential occurrence of being. The speaking gathers being to a first resonating of its essence, and yet sounds forth itself only from this essence. Spoken in the preliminary exercise is a questioning that is not the purposive act of an individual or something delimited and calculated by a community. Prior to all that, it is the passing, of, passing on of an intimation that comes from and remains assigned to 
what is most most question worthy. Detachment from every quote unquote personal domain will succeed only out of the intimacy of the earliest belonging. No grounding is granted unless such a detachment would vouch for it. The age of the systems has passed. The age that would elaborate the essential form of beings from out of the truth of being has not yet come. So you see we're in this gap, right? We're in this liminal gap between um, the systematization of thought and being and this more originary truth of being as such, which has not been developed and articulated yet. In the interim, in the transition to the other beginning, philosophy needs to have accomplished something essential. The projection, i.e. the grounding and opening up of the temporal spatial playing field of the truth of being. How is this unique accomplishment to be brought about? There's no precedent for it and no foothold. Mere variations on previous notions, even if these variations arise with the help of the greatest possible intermixing of historiological familiar modes of thought, will get us nowhere. Furthermore, all worldviews theories stand completely outside philosophy, for they can exist only by denying that being is worthy of question. So this question that inaugurated philosophy in the first beginning has been covered over by um, the systematization and the instrumentalization of thought and, and, uh, and being. So by honoring this question worthiness, philosophy poses its own dignity, possesses its own dignity. So the dignity, the very dignity itself of philosophy is in this questioning. So he says, by honoring this question worthiness, philosophy possesses its own dignity, one that cannot be derived from elsewhere and cannot be calculated. All decisions regarding philosophy's dealings arise from the preservation of this dignity and as preservations of this dignity. So the very preservation of the dignity of philo philosoph philosophical thinking, philosophizing itself, is found in this questioning. In the realm of what is most worthy of question, however, these dealings can only constitute a unique questioning. If in any of its hidden ages, then it is in the transition to the other beginning that philosophy, in the clarity of its knowledge, must come to a decision regarding its own essence. So I'm going to leave it there. That's just a couple of paragraphs. And I just wanted to gauge any interest in this uh, kind of line of inquiry. If anybody wants to kind of go on this journey with me, um, please give me some feedback. Uh, if this didn't make sense at all, I'd like to hear that as well. So um, I'm going to leave it there and I'm, you know, we'll see if we can get some more into this. So thanks for chiming in, guys. Thanks for listening. And, and um, I'll see you guys soon. Thanks.